Hello everybody, today I'm going to explain the third problem of the 2025 Yusuko General Contest in bronze, the problem cow checkups. In this problem, we are given two arrays of length n, and each array has values from 1 to n, and we are given an operation that uh, the farmer will perform exactly once, which is selecting two integers and reversing the order of the cows that are between the left and the right cow in the line, while keeping the other cows in the same position. Now, we want to measure how effective this uh, approach is, and we want to find out for every single uh, number from uh, one from 0 to n, how many of these uh, ways to apply the operation would result in having exactly i matches uh, in the array, where a match is a pair of positions in both arrays such that the values are equal. They explain here, for example, that for three of these methods, then there will be no, uh, no cows checked, while for the other three operations, you can see that we have one cow checked. So again, uh, we need to count for all numbers from uh, 0 to n, how many of these subarray reversals would result in having this uh, number of checks. And now we want to find out how to process all of these reversals and perform all of these checks fast enough to avoid any sort of, uh, any sort of uh, time limit issues. And now we want to we want to think at how to do it fast. And obviously, for a few of the test cases, we would have uh, n up to one hundred, which would be fast enough to get us to the answer, but uh, uh, to the answer for n cube. But uh, we want to find something most likely an n squared. And now the question is, how do we find an n squared given that in theory, we need to do up to n cube operations. And one common idea for these kinds of problems is to think at how much every pair of positions contributes to the answer. And if we were to have had to count the sum of the number of checks, so not to count uh, for each uh, number how many subarrays we had to reverse, if we were to have had to compute the number of checks for all pairs of integers, it would have been enough to just uh, it would have been enough to just uh, more or less uh, have a for loop which goes through both ways to uh, from one to n, and to check in how many of these subarrays that pair would be reversed like that. Again, this would have required a bit of math without much difficulty. However, let's think exactly at what happens when we reverse a certain pair of positions. So let's say that we have this subarray. So we have these positions. So let we have I will color with different colors every pair of positions that will be reversed in a certain configuration. So I will use orange, green, blue, and so on. And I can keep going. I will keep going for one more step. And let's say we have eight. Uh, we have a subarray of length that eight that is reversed. And now the question is, how do we find out how many of these, uh, how many checks we will perform when we invert a subarray of length eight? First off, we can obviously deduce that we will perform as many checks as the numbers to the left and to the right will stay in the same place and they are equal with their counterparts. So we can think of maybe something like a prefix or a suffix uh, sum for this kind of option. So we can quickly store using maybe some prefix sum or some other method how many of these uh, checks we have to do. There are also more simple ways when you do the nested for loop to count maybe how many pairs were at the beginning and to combine with some answer from the end so that we don't actually have to pre-compute prefix and suffix sums. Now, 
now that we dealt with these, uh, how do we actually compute this fast? Because one big issue is that if we add one position to the right, the matching for all of these uh, positions would be totally different. So we want to be smart about it. And an interesting observation we can make is that if we look at this subarray, let's assume that we compute in linear time, how many pairs we would result we would get as a result of performing this operation. Now, if we look at this answer, if we were to add exactly one more value to the left and one more value to the right, then everything that we did here will also apply to the same subarray, but with two more values. And if we were to be more formal about it, we can say that if we had the subarray ij, which was reversed, then the distance from this subarray to the subarray i minus 1, j plus 1 is actually determined only by what happens when we invert the positions i minus 1 and j plus 1. And this observation is very important because it allows us to compute faster how many of these subar how many of these pairs we would get as a result of inverting any subarray. And this observation is by far the most powerful for this problem, as it allows us to reduce the complexity from n cube to n square, which was the main goal of the problem. And then in order to keep track of the number of subarrays for these positions, we can think of storing a 2D grid where we have these uh, where we have these matrices uh, stored and uh, then performing a pre-computing phase where for each length from 1 to n we rely on what happened at the previous length and add potentially 0 1 or 2 depending on how do the values at these two positions interact and after we compute these prefix and suffix uh, things or just have a traversal that goes through them, we are good to go and we can now count for each subarray how many cows will be checked as a result of inverting that subarray. And let me show you the code for this one. So in this solution, when I first coded it, I just did some prefix sums and suffix sums. Again, they can be avoided. Like I mentioned, you can have a traver you can have a traversal, for example, when you do it here at the end, where you count, let's say, how many positions you have to the left, and maybe do something to the right, so you don't actually have to do the prefix and the suffix part. But again, it's not uh, super difficult to do this either. And then I have here this count of ij, which keeps track of how many pairs we get out of inverting the subarray ij but strictly within the subarray and here we have uh, uh, we have at first the part where we compute uh, just for these positions i and j what happens so we check if the i position will match with the j one from the second array or the other way around and if we have a length one we just check that one pair to avoid overcounting then here in this part, we will make sure that we will go in the increasing order of length to also add up the answers for the subarrays of smaller lengths. And if you see here, I have the subarray from L minus 1 to L plus length, which gets its value increased by the current subarray we are iterating over. So we are correct in increasing order of length and then in the increasing order of the starting position. And here in the final part, we need to check how many good uh, positions we have by adding up to this count what we have on the prefix and what we have on the suffix. And then because we need to count how many such values we have in total for each length, we keep another frequency array. So again, just like in the second problem, frequency arrays once again turn out to be very important. And we print the values pretty easily. And if you saw here in the submission log, 
This solution actually runs rather fast. It runs in less than 500 milliseconds, which is more or less expected given that we are talking about a quadratic complexity for n up to 7500. Take note that the memory use is very large, which was maybe one of the reasons why the problem authors uh, suggested people to avoid using Python for full score. But again, depending on uh, how would uh, the Python code be like, I will try to code it also when the problems will be published. I am relatively confident that it can be uh, solved also with Python. If you enjoyed watching this video, please like the video, subscribe to the, sh to the channel, and if you have any sort of feedback or suggestion, please leave them in the comments so that I can listen to them and uh, have my videos be better and better. Also, if you or someone else you know is interested in Yusuko or is interested even in working more closely with me, please check out my webs website where you can see my results with the various students as I worked with them throughout the Yusuko season as well as for any other competitive programming competition. Until the next time, please check out the other videos I made on the channel for this contest as well as for the last contest. And good luck in the future Yusuko contest. Until the next time, stay safe and cheers.